Dear students, in this session we are continuing with plant growth regulators and now we discuss about ethylene which is a gaseous PGR. It is of course gaseous in nature and it is synthesized by tissues undergoing senescence and ripening of the fruits. Before we go into detail students I would like you to know that ethylene is a PGR which falls in both the categories the one which promotes growth the one which inhibits growth that means it has dual role and it is playing its different role at different points. So it is synthesized by those tissues which are undergoing senescence means which are going to die. Ripening of fruit of course ripening of fruit is very important but after it is ripe if it is not consumed it will undergo rotting and it will be spoiled. So ethylene has a role to play in ripening as well as senescence. Horizontal growth of seedling which becomes important in certain situations. Swelling of excess is also important when it comes to senescence or ripening. Apical hook formation in dicot seedlings. Suppose you put gram seed in water and peel it, then you will find two cotyledons, and both the cotyledons are connected with a hook kind of structure, and that is because of this PGR. Promoted senescence and abscission of leaves and flowers. So, it is promoting the falling of leaves dying of leaves. Of course, that is important phenomenon for tree, but it should take place under the influence of some PGR and ethylene has a role in this. Fruit ripening is the major activity of ethylene. Children, I am sure you know, if fruit is overripe, it smells like alcohol because ethylene is involved in the ripening of fruit. Suppose it is grape or orange where it is just ripe you enjoy eating it but if you have kept it on the table for one week and after that you open the orange you feel alcoholic smell that is fermented smell and that is because of more of ethylene. So ethylene causes ripening and it will also cause over ripening if fruit is not utilized on time. So ethylene has a role there also. It exhibits respiratory climactic. You know respiration is as important in plants as in us and that climax is reached with the help of ethylene. Ethylene has many more roles to play. It breaks seed and bud dormancy. When seed is kept in a container it does not germinate and when kept in moist soil it germinates. So that dormancy is broken by ethylene. Similarly, when bud comes on the tree, now from this bud the flower will come and from flower the fruit will come and from fruit the seed will come. So bud should die then only flower will come. So that dormancy of bud is also broken by ethylene. In other words, if ethylene is not present then bud remains bud and if bud is not converted to flower the future process will not take place, the purpose will not be served. So ethylene has very important role at this point. It initiates germination, very good example is peanut seeds and we all know unless seed germinates the plant cannot come out. So that is another very important role which this PGR ethylene is playing. A sprouting of potato tubers. You know children in potato there are eyes and if you cut this portion of potato along with the eye and put in the soil it will grow. Germination will take place. Again at this point also ethylene has a role. It will help this eye bud to germinate. Promotes rapid internode petiole elongation in deep water rice plants. You know what internodes are. 
you know what petiole is and elongation of these internodes will increase the height of the plant and the plant which is in deep waters when height will increase it will gradually come outside water and that is the purpose ethylene has a role in this initiates flowering flowering is an important phenomenon in any tree because flowering is a base for fruit formation and seed formation pollination can take place only when seeds are formed. So, flowering is important and that also takes place with the help of this PGR ethylene. It synchronizes fruit set. For example, pineapple. In pineapple, there are so many small, small fruits put together making one big fruit. So, this is called fruit set. Now, it has certain arrangement and that arrangement making that set of fruits is also looked after by ethylene. Induces flowering in mango. Like any other plant, the flowering is important and the mango tree when flowering comes after that mangoes as a fruit will come. So, ethylene is very important PGR which falls in both the categories promoter as well as inhibitor. So, ethylene is another important PGR which falls in both the categories, the promoter category and the inhibitor category and that is the reason why it has so many varied roles to play. Now next PGR is abscisic acid. It is general plant growth inhibitor. It is purely an inhibitor. Inhibits plant metabolism which is required at certain points in the plant growth. It inhibits seed germination, again in other words it helps in dormancy, it stimulates stomata closure, it students you know the role of stomata in the plant and if it is closed then those roles will not be played and abscisic acid has its role and we know that stomatas are normally closed during night. It increases plant tolerance against stresses. So, it is also called stress hormone. It inhibits stress in the body of the plant. It plays a role in seed development, maturation and dormancy. Now, these are the varied roles as far as inhibition is concerned. It will help in development also, it will help in maturation also and it will help in dormancy also. So, dormancy is important for other aspects as well. It helps seed to withstand desiccation. Desiccation means drying, so much of drying that it cannot germinate after that. Desiccation means almost the death of the seed. So, that is prevented by abscisic acid by this PGR inhibitor. It is antagonistic to gibberellins GA. Whatever growth is promoted by gibberellin is antagonized or inhibited by abscisic acid. So, a balance is achieved. Sometimes plant requires growth, sometimes it requires inhibition. And by acting antagonistic to GA or gibberellin, the purpose is served, the net result is achieved. I would also like to explain you that these five PGRs, sometimes they act together, sometimes they act separately individually, sometimes some of them are promoting, some of them are inhibiting. So, say they may synchronize sometimes, act synergistically at other time and act antagonistically on other occasion. So, they have various roles to play in totality they regulate plant growth. We are now discussing photoperiodism. As the word indicates, photo means light and periodism means period. So, in this context, we are trying to discuss the light and the plant relationship. In other words, for how long the plant is exposed to sun? Of course, students we know that sunlight is important for photosynthesis and plant needs it. But 
how long? Of course, sunlight is important, so day is important, but night is equally important for plant. In other words, exposure of plant to sunlight and no exposure to plant to sunlight, both the situations are equally important. On the basis of this, we can talk about long day plant, short day plant, day neutral plants, etc. But before that, we must know what is the site of perception of light? It is leaves, only leaves. How plant knows that sun is there and the effect of sun should be brought about? And how plant knows that now sun is not there, so different kind of effects should be brought about? The site of perception of sunlight is leaves. Of course, we know photosynthesis takes place in leaves, primarily, of course, wherever green chlorophyll is there, little bit of photosynthesis will go on. Now, once the perception has taken place, the leaves have perceived the light, perhaps the hormone is produced, some hormone is produced in the leaves, which will migrate from leaves to other parts of the plant, the shoot, the apices, the flowers, etc., to give the message that sunlight is there. So, the day condition should be utilized and this will be the day part for the plant against the night part of the plant. What I wish to emphasize, whether it is flowering or fruiting or senescence or abscission, Whatever the case may be, is a balance of daylight and no daylight or day and night which is effective and not only day and not only sun. So, we have understood that perception of light is by leaves and this perception moves to other parts of the plant through a hormone which is produced by leaves and it is moving to other parts of the plant giving the message that sunlight is there. On the basis of this, we can have different categories of plants like long day plants which are exposed to sunlight for long durations, short day plant which are exposed to sunlight for short durations and day neutral plants which are not affected by the length of the day or length of the night. That means for flowering in long day plant more sun is required. Short day plant for flowering, less sun is required and day neutral plant are not affected by sun as far as flowering is concerned. So, light period and dark period both prepare or create a proportion which results into flowering. So, photoperiodism varies from plant to plant, area to area and flowering time and fruiting time according to the timings in the plant. There is one more term which is very important and I would like you to be familiar with and that is vernalization. Vernalization means flowering based on low temperature. In certain plants, flowering will take place only if temperature is low. It will prevent precocious reproductive development. Reproductive development is very important in any plant for flowering, for fruiting, for seedling. But if it is precautious, precautious means before time, then all the things will be affected, flowering, fruiting and seedling. So, vernalization prevents precautious development of reproductive structures. It enables plant sufficient time to reach maturity. Because of low temperature, the development is slow. So, plant is having enough time to attain maturity, the reproductive and otherwise. Good examples are wheat, barley, rye, where you have winter cropping as well as spring varieties. So, during winter, the flowering will not be that quick and spring variety will take long time for flowering. So, we have two varieties, winter varieties and spring varieties. 
It is seen, the vernalization is seen in biennial plants like sugar beet, like cabbage and again low temperature has its role to play. With this we have understood the PGRs and also photoperiodism and vernalization. In this session, we discussed about PGR ethylene, then abscisic acid and various roles of ethylene as a promoter, as an inhibitor and abscisic acid only as inhibitor and antagonistic to gibberellins. We discussed about photoperiods, long day plant, short day plant, day neutral plant and also vernalization where the flowering takes place in low temperature. With this, we come to the end of the session. Thank you.